Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. And good evening again. It's an incredibly hard day for those in Middle Tennessee after a tornado ripped through the Nashville area. Some lost friends and family. The death toll now up to 25. WYMT's Connor James talked with the music duo Halfway to Hazard. A couple of former Eastern Kentuckians that live in Nashville. They even helped us host a telethon back when we were hit by the March 2nd tornado outbreak eight years ago yesterday. Connor wraps up a devastating night in Nashville. It's hard to imagine the sheer devastation. There it is! Go! Inside! No! No! That's until you see the pictures, the videos. It's sobering. During the night, a tornado would travel through multiple Tennessee counties, ripping homes and taking lives. To the people in Tennessee recovering from the damage, attempting to heal, you will not be alone. We understand your pain. Eight years ago, many of us here in Kentucky were waking up to an increasing death toll as tornadoes ripped up a place we called home on the evening of March 2nd, 2012. 26 people in our state died. Many of us here consider Nashville a second home. We feel that loss. Our friends down there, musicians we hold close here who were with us in our dark hours are there with you now. They believe in you. It, it, it's a very resilient town and, uh, and people get together and, and they help each other. Nashville's hurt, but you know, Nashville's been through things like this before and we'll get through it. Nashville, you're a place filled with passion, a city rooted in music, rich in history. In the coming days, weeks, and months, you'll hear stories of loss, but also of incredible miracles. Hold on to those miracles. Let those define you. Through this destruction, a message still stands. A message many in your state, our state, and this country hold on to. In Hazard, Connor James, WYMT Mountain News. And again, just minutes ago, we learned the death toll is now up to 25. Damage, of course, across the region is still being assessed. Well, it is Severe Weather Awareness Week here in the mountains, and to make sure that we are safe here when a tornado strikes, we got a couple events coming up tomorrow. That tornado drill at 10.07 a.m. Make sure you have a plan with your family at home, at school. Thursday, we will have a weather radio event down in Corbin at WD Bryant. Brandon and I will be there programming radio, so bring yours from home or you can get one from us and we'll help you set that up. And Saturday, we will also be at Severe Weather Awareness Day over in Prestonsburg at the East Kentucky Science Center. Bring everyone, all the kids. It'll be kind of a fun day. We'll learn a lot more about severe weather and how to stay prepared during these kind of scarier events. It was a little scary last night here in eastern Kentucky. We got a little bit of rumbles of thunder, saw lots of lightning that's moved out quickly as that cold front has kind of pushed through. It's still right over top of us, though, but still pushing through the mountains, which is why we are starting to see some of that clearing. Bringing in some gusty winds, though, behind this front, anywhere from about 20 to 30, a little bit above 30 miles per hour at times. So making it feel a little bit cooler out there. Winds start to die down tonight and warmer airs on the way along with sunshine tomorrow. I'll have more on that coming up. Thank you, Paige. Well, Barberville Independent Schools did not cancel classes many times this year, especially compared to surrounding schools. But attendance percentages plummeted to the low 80s yesterday. New at 6, WYMT's Hannah Reynolds talked to officials at the Knox County Health Department that say there are several reasons why students are not showing up. Parents like Tammy Owens get a little panicked when their kids get sick. She actually did have the stomach virus last week. So we had to go through all of the disinfectant at our house to keep everybody else in the house from getting it. And right now the health department is hearing that story a lot. Since Friday, it's keeping attendance low at Barberville schools. Because they are with each other so often. And so when one gets sick, they passes it. But not just for the stomach bug. And we had lots of parents call in and lots of verifications for strep and the stomach bug and the flu. So schools called off for the rest of the week. But for some of the staff, 
It's business as usual. Every day, all our custodians or support staff, we take time to clean desks, wipe down handles. But the few days off is giving them the chance to do a little deeper cleaning. This is a mist machine. It has disinfectant in it and we can use it uh, to spray down cafeteria, classrooms. All in the hopes that next week when we come back, hopefully uh, our kids will be healthy. And ready to hit the books come Monday. In Knox County, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. Now all Barberville Independent Schools will be out until Monday and we'll be using NTI days until then. And just a reminder, you can find up to the minute school closings on our website at WYMT.com and the WYMT News app. And new changes to what's required to vote are a step closer to becoming law. Today, the Kentucky House advanced their version of Senate Bill 2. It's called the Voter ID Bill, and it would require most voters to show a photo ID to cast a ballot. The House did make some changes to the Senate version, one of which would allow poll workers to vouch for the identity of those they know. Governor Bashir says Kentucky lawmakers need to vote on a bill that he says will help nearly 2 million Kentuckians with their health insurance coverage. Bashir says House Bill 21 would prevent health insurance companies from denying coverage for pre-existing conditions. One attorney in favor of the bill says her yearly health costs were more than $31,000. A federal judge sentenced a former local magistrate to 18 months in prison for selling drugs while running for office. The Lexington Herald Leader reports former Knox County Magistrate Jerry Rabbit Cox will also spend six months on house arrest after he is released. Cox sold oxycodone and hydrocodone to an undercover police informant while running for re-election in the 2018 primary. More than 20 Gordman stores held their grand opening celebrations in Kentucky this morning, and one of those is right here in Perry County. WYMT's Lacey Roberts was at the ribbon cutting ceremony, which meant so much more. Three, two, one. Woo! Here in Perry County, we got a chance to win a $50 gift card. This Gordman's is one of 24 other stores opening Tuesday morning. I think it's going to spark other people moving to the area. Zach Lawrence, the new director of economic development for Hazard and Perry County, is excited to see the momentum the new store opening brings. Whether it's a, a big name brand chain or a, a little mom and pop shop, we welcome all that in Perry, Hazard and Perry County. Not only providing more opportunities to shop inside the county, but keep money local, as well as keep our young people here for career opportunities. We want to make this place a place where the high school kids can go away to school or go here to the community college and get their degree and come back here and stay. Like Keisha Campbell. $50 gift card. Campbell started as a sales associate in this same building in 2014. Only then it was previously called Goodies. Here it is 2020, you know, with the role that I wanted. Now at the age of 25. Are you finding everything okay? She is the store manager. A goal she did not think was achievable. Coming from a small town, usually there's not a lot of jobs here, but the fact that I was able to stay in my hometown and get the job that I've always wanted, it feels really good. Managing 22 employees and needs at least eight more to complete the store's merge. Oh, I've got a great team. I've got a lot of high schoolers. They work hard. And at each of the grand openings, Gordman's will donate a $1,000 check to a local school. Hazard High School was that recipient. In Hazard, Lacey Roberts, WYMT Mountain News. Now, some of the other locations where Gordman's open today include Harlan, London, and Paintsville. For a complete list, you can head over to WYMT.com. And at the Gorman's grand opening, WYMT spoke with the new economic development director for Hazard and Perry County, Zach Lawrence. Lawrence mentioned his excitement for being in Perry County. He will work with officials of both the city and county, where he says he just wants to bring the area more positive momentum moving forward. My role is going to focus on working with existing industry here in Hazard and Perry County uh, to foster growth and discover ways that they can uh, do more business or do business better, more efficiently, uh, as well as working with new business to recruit them to the area. Lawrence previously served as a project manager at the Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development, which is the primary state agency for job creation and investment in Kentucky.
And we'll hang on to those warmer temperatures for a few more days. Big cool down Friday before we're looking at a pretty nice weekend. I'll have those details coming up. And students at one Eastern Kentucky school took a trip to the farm today right in their own backyard.